want to pivot here and talk about something else that a lot of folks in this country continue to talk about, head injuries in football. It's getting more and more attention lately in the NFL. Former players like Tony Dorsett and Mark Duber recently announced that they have CTE. It's chronic traumatic encephalopathy. I butchered the word, but I think you know what I'm talking about. It's a brain condition. It's believed to be caused by the many hits that they've taken over the years. Now, in an exclusive interview with the Today Show's Matt Lauer, legendary quarterback Brett Favre, who has admitted to suffering memory loss himself, questions whether he would let a son play the sport. I, I would be real leery of him playing. And that sounds, in some respects, I'm almost glad I don't have a son because of the pressures that he would face. But Worries like that are having an effect on the nation's largest youth football program. Pop Warner participation dropped nearly 10 percent between 2010 and 2012. That's the largest two-year decline since they started keeping those statistics. The organization's chief medical officer says concerns about head injuries is mainly driving the decline. Dr. Robert Rineker is the director of the Texas Biomedical Device Center. He and his team have created something that they say could change the game when it comes to protecting players on the field. It's today's big idea as well. Dr. Rineker, your device is, is designed to give coaches early warning signs. I know that's probably a bit of an oversimplification, but, but how does it work? So we're currently developing two different devices. One's a device that's commercially available through uh, X2 Biosystems or Nike that measures changes in acceleration of the head associated with impacts. But a second device that we're working on is called a neuro triage system. And this device actually quantifies changes in the brain's health or the brain status following those impacts to let us know if somebody's impaired. Right now, you, uh, following a hit, you don't know if somebody's impaired or not necessarily. So one guy may be on the ground, uh, and the other guy pops right up and, and goes right back uh, into the game. And the question is, is the guy that popped right back up, is he impaired, and he, is he more likely to have a, a major uh, uh, brain injury because he's back in the game? Hold up that device one more time so our, our, our viewers at home can, can get a good look at it. I didn't get a, a good look at it there. Uh, and what's it called again? This is a neuro triage system. So we do a series of, of visual tests that measure pupils and pupil dilation times and, and, and how uh, the brain responds to different light patterns to allow us to quantify changes in the brain state. So the, the players will do the test before the game and then they'll do it after they have a, a, they, we detect a high impact. And if the, the status of that player changes, then we can, we can uh, go ahead and, and take them back in the locker room and do a more full assessment to see uh, uh, if, if they need to come out of the game or if they can go back in the game. There are, as you know, um, a, a lot of parents who are concerned right now around this country about kids playing football. A lot of adults as well who play the sport themselves coming out uh, with some reservations. There are approximately 67,000 diagnosed concussions in high school football every year. 5% of high school players report suffering a concussion every season. Uh, the numbers themselves seem staggering uh, when you look at them like that. Do you think we've seen an uptick in concussions, uh, or, or do you think that, that the reporting has just gotten a lot better? I, I think the reporting has gotten a lot better. I think we, we, we now, as neuroscientists and, and neurologists, understand that you know, it's not just the acute injury, it's not just the, the concussion, it's it, the brain reorganizes and changes following these injuries, and, and the question is, can we prevent that? Uh, and so be, by being aware, we may be able to develop therapies to prevent chronic damage, such as depression or memory issues, things like that. And so um, I really think that part of this is just an awareness. And that device that, that, uh, that you've got there, how close is it to getting to market? So right now what we're doing is we're instrumenting uh, uh, two high school teams in, in Dallas with accelerometers. These are little devices. Nike sells a device. X2 Biosystem sells a device. This one was made by Kilby Labs at Texas Instruments. It, it's actually a sensor that says, hey, your, your athlete took a hit. This will be ready in the fall for us. But you can buy these commercially right now. The, the neuro triage system that we're working on, what we're doing is we're taking five clinical devices that you would see in a neuro-ophthalmologist's office, and we're putting them in the locker rooms of, of two high schools here in Dallas, okay. and we're going to instrument these high school kids and, and measure them. That device will probably be ready for us in 12 months. Dr. Rineker, keep us up to keep us up to speed on, on what's happening there in Dallas with this uh, with this device. It does actually sound like it could do a great deal of great deal of good. Dr. Robert Rineker, thank you, sir. And do you have a big idea 
It's making a difference. You can tell us about it by emailing us at bigidea.msnbc at nbcuni.com.